Why do we stand like this? Because we need to be open. Open to experience, open to the stories we hear that may not be like our own. And in being open, we become more vulnerable, but in becoming more vulnerable, we're open more to love and learning. So what can we do in terms of community, in terms of providing or getting involved in those things over the summertime as well, or winter breaks and spring break and February break, when these kids are at home seven days a week and might not have that two to three meals a day that they have usually been provided by the school. But a lot of the times, like, you know, you, like, not, like, complain, but you're just like, oh, I don't want that. And I think, like, a lot of the times it's just, you know, then you just think, like, oh, my gosh, I have all these options. Like, I have. Like, there is so many people out there that don't have the things that we do have and that there's so much that we can do, but I don't do what I should There's still like so much that needs to be done with so many people that need help. And like I'm proud of what we did, but it just like it's weird like how many people still go without food even though we did that like out for two days. They run out of that food so fast for Thanksgiving and Christmas and then like they're back to like having like nothing. We all thought once the world would see what happened behind the gates, it would never happen again. And we still have genocides. It did not happen with guns. It happened with words, with language. If the president of the country or whoever is in charge, you know, politically speaking, in charge of a country, and you tell the population that certain groups or certain population, population within your country are no good. They're rapists, they're murderers, they deal in drugs, and they don't want to work, we have to support them, etc., etc., etc. So you, you target a group of people, and you do that long enough, and you're going to believe it. So every time I hear that this group is no good, and that group is no good, mm -hmm. certain people are not very nice. But you don't say, all oh, blacks are no good, all oh, Mexicans are no good, no, all oh, Jews are no good. Don't ever do that. Oh, it was very surprising to see that there were that many genocide happening now, and it kind of opened everyone's eyes because we knew that it was like very important that we kind of get the word out. And well, you could educate others to kind of let them know, like with the Pyramid of Hate, you can show them the different signs just so they can be aware and bring people to learn about news in other countries besides our own. What do you think about those great, you know, public spaces that we have to congregate in throughout the region? Um, those are traditionally in places that are doing better economically. So it does have, not only contributes to your, um, you know, well-being in a multitude of ways, but it also impacts the economy. So sometimes you're seeing these spaces with fewer amenities in places that don't have as much investment, and I think that's, it's not by accident. I think it, disinvestment in an area economically also leads to things being run down and you're not having as many amenities. So I think that that's something you guys are thinking about in terms of where you want to place the benches that you're building. You're in a different country. So prob probably living in a refugee camp, right? And you're applying for refugee status within the United States. So there's like a three year vetting process where you're in that camp and the US government is trying to decide if your claim that you like that you're a refugee is valid and whether or not you're going to be allowed to come to the United States. And it turns out that Buffalo is actually a huge hub for refugee resettlement. Buffalo has a very large refugee population. And I don't know about you guys, but I had I didn't know that until I was older because I didn't really spend a lot of time on the west side because I grew up in Kenmore and I never really left Kenmore.